Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good evening and welcome back. You are tuned into the special focus on Salah Media. My name is Zahid Jadwit. We are together until 9 p.m. this evening. Uh, and uh, earlier on, we had a really interesting discussion regarding uh, the public, uh, the Political Party Funding Act, uh, which has been signed into law. And uh, it seeks to regulate uh, donations that are being made towards political parties and uh, a really interesting conversation. So if you did miss that uh, conversation, you can certainly, uh, you know, find it on our Facebook and YouTube pages. Uh, but it's time now to move on to another important uh, discussion for this evening. Uh, there's a really serious issue coming out of uh, Sanyavo in Rosenberg Russian, in the Northwest, uh, where residents are complaining about uh, water interruptions which have been affecting their lives uh, on a nearly daily basis and that's how frequent it is uh, and they've, they claim to have been receiving conflicting reports from uh, the municipality and uh, Mahali's water uh, so basically what we're going to do this evening is uh, we're going to try to get the, to the bottom of this uh, we have uh, the municipality is going to be joining us uh, a little later on in the show at about uh, quarter to uh, nine this evening uh, they're going to be uh, giving us their view and uh, the, from their perspective uh, with regards to this discussion. Uh, but in the meantime, we are joined uh, now by Shoei Baum, who is a uh, one of the residents in fact, uh, and he is also a businessman, a local businessman in Zanyapo. Uh, he joins us on the line now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother Shoei, and welcome to the show. Uh, all right, so let me just remind the listeners as well. So we would certainly love uh, if you participate in this discussion as well, uh, especially if you are from Zanyavo, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, the WhatsApp number for your WhatsApp text messages is 061-766-0355. Uh, you can tweet and tag at Salah Media. Please don't forget to use the hashtag, the special focus. Alternatively, you may want to leave a comment below our Facebook and YouTube live videos. So let's get straight into it. Uh, Brother Jaib, we've been hearing uh, reports that uh, there's been frequent water outages uh, in Zanyavo, in your area, uh, and it's uh, severely impacted uh, local business uh, people, uh, the way they operate, as well as uh, residents in the area. Uh, so could you just begin by giving us an idea of how long this has been going on for? Exactly. Uh, I'm also uh, from the Zanyavo Right Bay Association. Uh, Basically, uh, we've been having these problems of uh, water outages uh, for, for, for many, many years. Uh, we've uh, had numerous interactions with uh, the municipality and, and the Department of uh, Infrastructure for, for a long time. Uh, problems that, uh, regarding water shortages, uh, Regarding no water on many days has been going on for a long time. And the municipality is always uh, shifting the goalposts, uh, blaming other, other, other structures, etc. Now, basically, the situation has gone from bad to worse. Uh, problems that has been eliminated is that on numerous occasions, there isn't sufficient water in the reservoir which feeds our area, which feeds the industrial area and feeds other areas as well. Uh, on, on many occasions, and the blame has been put on to the Mahalich Water and WFSA. But basically, uh, just to put, put it into perspective, the, the, the entire infrastructure uh, regarding water has collapsed in, 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 in Rastenberg and, and in our area as well. Uh, so basically, there's this total lack of maintenance. Uh, they're not developing and improving on the infrastructure. Uh, also, uh, the reservoir. Now, basically, the reservoir can only feed a certain amount of of of, of an area, and and there's an increased capacity, uh, and, and the area has grown tremendously over the many years. But they, they they haven't developed additional infrastructures with regards to reservoirs. What the result is that uh, you're not getting sufficient water. Uh, uh, the capacity is much less. We've also now uh, there's another more uh, that is busy being built at the moment, uh, uh, quite quite a quite a big wall, and that wall is also being fed by the very same reservoir. So they haven't improved in terms of the the the, the capacity with regards to the reservoir or put in additional reservoirs. Uh, secondly, uh, maintenance is a major problem. Uh, many years ago, uh, we've had endless problems with the old asbestos pipe. 
uh, after numerous uh, complaints from the community, uh, the municipality then uh, got in a contractor to, to, to put up a new uh, water piping system and so forth. But we still experience daily water leaks. Uh, millions of liters of water is, 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 is being wasted. Uh, there's, there's, there's numerous amount of leakages on a daily basis. Now, on, on many occasions, when also they, they, they come and repair a water leak, uh, they don't have the, the, the necessary equipment. They don't have the spares. You will have a situation where a repair work will take sometimes up to 10, sometimes 24 hours. Uh, they will close the, 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 the water valve and residents will be without water. So it's a collapse. It, 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 it's numerous problems uh, that we have in it's a community of, of, of uh, problems coming out with regards to total lack of infrastructure. Uh, uh, maintenance is, is a major problem. And also, they don't have the necessary equipment and space on many occasions to deal with regards to the, to the water leak that we have. We are also experiencing water quality. Uh, uh, we found on numerous occasions where there's been worms. Uh, and, and the water being uh, uh, discolored, uh, uh, disfigured, smelly, uh, dirty brown water. Uh, we, we brought it up to the municipality on numerous occasions to say uh, this is not fit for human consumption. Uh, people depend on that water, uh, but nothing has been done with regards to that specific aspect. Uh, recently, uh, we sent them pictures with regards to worms uh, coming up from the water, as well as, 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 as the, the water being brown and and, and so forth, but but they have not done anything with regards to improving on that aspect. So we mm-hmm. have also a situation, with a situation where uh, the, the the problems are are, are, are getting worse, uh, and problems in terms of water shortages. Uh, we have days, uh, two days or four days or five days in a week where there's no water, and it could be due to reservoir or it could be due to repairs and maintenance. Uh, so mm-hmm. so. You know, over the many years, we've, 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 we've contacted the municipality in terms of infrastructure to make sure that uh, they have the capacity to be able to deal with the specific problems. And, and the only thing that we've got here is unfulfilled promises and so forth, but, but nothing concrete, nothing that is going to be resolving the specific issue. Mm. So I do understand that uh, the community has been in engagement with the municipality over the course of time uh, with regards to this particular issue. Uh, but but uh, that's exactly why we are going to be speaking to the spokesperson a little bit later on in the show. We're going to introduce him uh, in a short while once he joins us. Uh, and he's going to give us the municipality side to the story. Uh, but, but Radha Shaheb, if, uh, before we move on, uh, how would you describe the... The, the sentiment on the ground uh, amongst residents and businessmen? Uh, obviously, uh, uh, people are uh, angry. Uh, people, uh, you know, without water on, on, on many days, uh, even on a Friday, Juma day, you know, we don't have water. Uh, people are now, uh, if I could say, really frustrated because we're not getting any positive feedback from the municipality. People are angry on the ground. Uh, and, and, and we're not getting we're not getting progress updates. So basically, nothing is moving forward in terms of improving the present situation. Uh, mm. We've been promised uh, uh, over time that they're going to be dealing with this specific matter, but we don't see anything concrete. We don't see anything that is uh, happening. Uh, during last year, uh, there was an interview the mayor had with Power FM, in which. He, he mentioned that uh, the matter with regards to uh, and the problems uh, with regards to uh, Mahali's water has been resolved and communities would not be experiencing further problems uh, with regards to uh, uh, the, 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 the reservoir and with regards to the uh, Mahali's water supplying uh, sufficient water to, to the municipality. But up to today, we're still having the very, very same problems. So, at the end of the day, uh, yeah. what we feel uh, as, 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 as a community is that the municipality are not taking this matter seriously. Uh, they're not doing sufficiently to make sure that uh, this problem is resolved uh, and, 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 and to ensure that residents that, that have water on a regular basis. 
Yeah, and uh, we are taking comments from the listeners as well. If you are especially from uh, Rustenburg uh, and you'd like to weigh in on this, uh, you can most certainly do so. The WhatsApp line 0617-660355. Uh, you can also find us on Twitter, on YouTube as well as on Facebook as well. Uh, so I think I see we are just, uh, we've just been joined now by David Machai, who is the spokesperson uh, for the Rustenburg municipality. He joins us now. Good evening, sir, and welcome to the show. David? Uh, David, if uh, we, we, we actually can't hear you at this stage, uh, there seems to be some uh, difficulty hearing you. Uh, so I'm going to ask the studio operator to just handle that and uh, take care of that to basically try and uh, uh, rectify the situation and guide you through uh, the steps to do so. Uh, but so if you've just tuned in, you are tuned into Salah Media. This is the special focus. Uh, we are together until 9 p.m. And uh, this evening in this segment of the show, we are uh, discussing something really important, especially to the people of Zanyabo, uh, where they, they have been uh, experiencing frequent uh, water interruption uh, in the area. This has severely impacted uh, local businesses, local uh, residents as well. Uh, and uh, as uh, Brother Shaib, uh, who, is a, who is a member of the Raids Forum as well in that area, uh, speaking to us about the situation, he, he describes it as a, a severe situation where they've hardly been getting any, uh, you know, action from the municipality side. In fact, uh, he's mentioned that they've had engagement with the municipality as well. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, not much, uh, not much of a result from that. Uh, he mentioned that the municipality, the mayor, in fact, of Rostenburg, uh, went on air on was it Power FM uh, to discuss this very issue, and uh, it was uh, mentioned that uh, the the water issue had been rectified, uh, and it wouldn't uh, be. Uh, be, be occurring once again, but uh, unfortunately, this is uh, still continuing. It's a pro problem that uh, still persists uh, for residents of Zenyobel. Uh, I see we've been joined by David Mokhai once again. Good evening, sir, and welcome to the show. Good evening, Sahid, and to the all right, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and the audio much more clear this uh, uh, on the second attempt. Uh, so. You've, I, I, I'm sure you've heard uh, the, the sentiment from one of the locals uh, from Rustenburg. He's been outlining the situation uh, that's uh, occurring in the area, the, 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 the water challenges. Uh, are you as the municipality uh, aware of the frequent water interruptions that uh, have been affecting residents of Zanyapal? Very much so. The water situation in Rustenburg is a long-standing issue. And we need to put it on record that it's not really much of a municipal capacity issue, but it relates more about the water service provider, which is Mahalis. And currently the situation that we are faced with in Rustenburg is that although the water service provider had in the recent weeks attempted to match the demand, uh, seemingly they have fallen short and the demand of the clean drinkable water required by the city st uh, far outstrips the supply that we're receiving. You would remember that as early as last year on March, the executive mayor met with the deputy minister and then tapped the entire delegation of Mahalis water to try and resolve this water. Commitments were made about uh, two of their pumps that were not operational, were serviced, put back into operation and seemingly the issue regarding the uh, demand on the part of the water service provider, which is Mahalis, is an issue which until now continues to bother us because generally Rustenberg has a high usage of water. To that extent, we have devised means to now even source water from a different supply line offered by rainwater, which is still also under severe pressure because generally when you look at the mines, the industries and the residents, uh, usage of water in Rustenburg is pretty much as compared to anywhere else in the province. Mm -hmm. So what would you, uh, you know, what would you attribute to being the cause uh, of these interruptions? Residents say they are told interruptions are due to empty reservoirs. Uh, however, they also claim to have received conflicting reports from the mayor uh, and from Mahali's water. So what, what exactly is the cause of these interruptions? Well, let, let us start here. As uh, late as uh, December, we had commitments from Mahalis Water that all of their pumps were back in operation. 
they were dealing rigorously with the maintenance backlog, which was supposed to address the water supply challenges, particularly by uh, our residents in parts of Tabani as well as Zinyaville, who are supplied through one of the Mahali supply lines. It's rather regrettable that uh, a month and a half later after that commitment, we are back into this situation. But we need to also uh, take our residents into confidence and explain the simple methodology of uh, implementing water restrictions. You would have a situation where the spare capacity in the reservoir has been completely depleted. That means in the event that we have to implement water restrictions, for whatever reasons, our reservoirs would be empty. Now, because the demand of water always and consistently exceeds the supply. We are forced to implement water rationing so as to give the system sufficient time to build up the necessary pressure and the amount of water required by residents before we can open all the channels so that uh, residents can have access to water. In the event that we do not do that, Rustenberg will be in a similar situation, much like it was with uh, Cape Town almost two years ago when they were envisaging uh, day zero. And we have been consistently communicating with the residents to explain to them that this is a necessary exercise, unless if we want to have a situation where one day Rustenberg will be without any clean drinking water. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and so I understand it seems to be a really severe issue, uh, both on the other side of residents as well as on the side of the municipality and for service providers as well. Uh, so this is uh, a, a really serious issue and you warn that uh, they may, you know, they might, uh, end up in a situation where uh, there's a similar situation to day zero in Cape Town. Uh, how severe do you think this is? Is this likely? Well, we wouldn't want to be raising alarm bells prematurely, but the reality of the matter is that Rustenberg is growing rapidly. Uh, in the entire Northwest province, we've got about 30 informal settlements. And there is major construction currently in the city. We're building about two new malls and there's consistent and constant development. Now, the growth of Rustenberg, for some odd reason, uh, has seemingly taken uh, those that need to be in the know, particularly about water supply, uh, by surprise. Because when you look at the average consumption, when you're not taking into account what the mines are using, what the industries are using, but uh, water that should be only for domestic use, the usage still is very, very high. And the only time Rustenberg really had a reprieve was last year during the lockdown, where a lot of people did not go to work around level five and level four. So that's when we had some form of a break in as far as the water supply issues are concerned. But as and when the president said, we're going back to level three to level two, the, the graph indicated otherwise, and the system continues to be constrained. Because as I said, when you look at the uh, water that's been used for uh, uh, by the mining industry, uh, by the industries around the cities and for domestic use. Usage across the board continues to be high, but we have communicated to the Minister, uh, Honorable Lindwe Sisul, we have communicated also with the Premier of the province to say, we are paying Mahalis month to month, we do not owe them anything, but seemingly they cannot keep the end of the bargain because much as we advise them on what the situation is, Residents are always at the receiving end, unfortunately, of having to uh, not have water uh, for at least four to six hours a day, sometimes even longer, because if you implement water restrictions, the mechanics of it is that you need to wait for the system to fill up, for the water to flow to your reservoirs, to have enough pressure to ensure that the water that's coming to the residents is clean. And only then can you then enable residents to have clean drinking water. You must remember that water is a human rights issue and is enshrined in the constitution. Therefore, we can't be cutting corners to give uh, residents uh, dirty water, which was the, the case in the last two weeks, where Mahali said they were having issues with water quality. We communicated to the affected residents, including those of Zinab, to say residents be aware that the water that's coming downstream is not clean uh, because Mahalis is having issues. So we've always been honest and upfront about the challenges that we as a municipality are facing, particularly as it relates to Mahalis being our water service provider. They have been doing uh, the, the technical exercise of testing the water. We've been doing that with them and we have committed to updating communities on regular intervals about what the situation is regarding the water quality as well as consistent and constant availability of water. Mm -hmm. So you, you do mention that uh, there's, a, there's a lack of uh, supply uh, when it comes to supplying water to the, to the area and hence the restrictions which are being put in place uh, with, with regards to water supply. Uh, 
but why is this uh, being uh, apparently uh, from what we've been hearing from residents uh, this seems to be affecting mainly Zanyaville residents uh, in fact the the interruptions water interruption in Zanyaville might not be as widespread uh, so as to include other areas uh, in Rustenburg as well uh, it seems to be affecting primarily and particularly uh, Zanyaville well, it is it is far from the truth because Mahali's water supplies greater parts of uh, Rustenburg, which is Greater Wittigong, it's part of Graal, Wittigong, which are the, uh, the, the, the townships, uh, Tabane, Tabane West, and parts of Haiload. So it is far from being truth, uh, truthful, rather, that the water restrictions primarily and for the longest time have been uh, adversely affecting residents of Zinaville. You must remember that we have a wide network of water infrastructure. So if we implement water restrictions, it's not only certain sections, but those that are getting supply from the same uh, water line, so to speak. So if it's you and me, we're living in two different suburbs, but we are accessing water from the same source. When the municipality implements water restrictions, you and I are going to suffer. It, it, is, it is not matter where you are. So long as you and I get water from the same water source, chances are you and I will be restricted. So it's not true that only residents of Zinaville have been adversely affected or these restrictions are targeting residents of Zinaville. All right, uh, thank you so much for that uh, clarification. Uh, and if I could just read a quick comment here from uh, an anonymous uh, listener this evening. Uh, so this uh, this listener says that for a long time, our ward councillor has been doing absolutely nothing uh, but collecting a fat check every month. Uh, in all these years, we've seen him once demanded that he should be fired, uh, but the mayor does not want to do so. Uh, I think uh, there's much more to that uh, to the listener uh, who has uh, just commented. I think there's much more to, uh, you know, just simply asking a mayor to fire a councillor. Uh, but uh, we are re really interested in this discussion and uh, it seems to be an important one uh, affecting many people. And uh, we are in conversation with uh, the spokesperson for Rustenburg Municipality, uh, Mr. David Machai. Uh, and just before I let you go, so uh, Mr. Machai, uh, you did mention Rustenburg is a fast growing city. Uh, in fact, according to the South African, uh, the, the population in Rustenburg is booming. And in fact, that makes uh, Rustenburg the far, one of the fastest, fastest, if not the fastest growing city uh, in the country. So what is the municipality and your service providers doing uh, to, to keep up with this demand that is now arising, as a, this growing demand that is arising as a result of the, the population boom? We are in regular contact and engagements with Mahalis Water. We, since our engagements with the, with the water service provider as early as March last year, the Executive Mayor, Councillor Mpokuno, has made absolutely sure that in at regular intervals, he meets with the leadership collective of the Water Authority to understand challenges that could emanate, uh, which would disable them from ensuring that residents have access to clean drinking water. So for almost a year, the municipality has been working closely with Mahali's water to ensure that we understand the gravity of the challenges and we communicate the message. And in between those discussions, we need to have plans, particularly by Mahalis, as to how they are going to address the challenges that may arise along the course of them ensuring that the residents in Rustenburg have water. So we have not been sleeping on the job. We've been communicating regularly, so ensuring that we keep residents up to speed with what is happening. And we are honest in our communication to actually uh, tell them what the issues are and how, as a municipality, of course, being a customer to Mahalis, how we intend on resolving those issues. Others have asked us, why can't you change water supplies? It's not a simple as that because it is a technical exercise it means a new infrastructure needs to be laid out testing needs to come into play the national department needs to authorize somebody else to now provide water to those residents that will be affected so we have said we are going to apply ourselves to the challenge we are going to make sure that we work collaboratively with them and ensuring that all stakeholders are involved as mentioned before we have communicated to the premier the mec and the minister so they are well aware of the issues on the ground and we are regularly updating them of the progress in ensuring that we are resolving with this issue mm. just quickly are you working on improving the infrastructure most, most certainly our mandate is to ensure that there's actually service delivery in rustenburg so th there's no other way 
but to make sure that where there are challenges, we address those challenges to the satisfaction of our residents. If that means we need to call for national intervention, so be it. Because if we fail to provide residents with water, we'll be trampling upon their human rights. So we cannot mm -hmm. be seen as not doing our job which is constitutionally enshrined to ensure that there is proper services to residents because those residents need to be serviced because the immediate point of contact is local government. So we are the closest to the people. Therefore, we could not abjudicate our responsibility to somebody else, but we need to fold our arms, get them dirty to make sure that residents get services that they deserve. All right, thank you so much for that. Uh, and uh, before I release you, just a quick comment here from uh, one of the residents. Uh, in fact, the resident who brought us to our attention here at Salaam Media, uh, Yasmin Wadi, who says, uh, the moment the water is back, it's brown and dirty. The toilets, are, uh, the toilets are dirty. Our washing is all getting stained, uh, and the water, which is full of stones and worms and dirt, our toilets are completely stained brown, and the water smells like a fish tank with something dead in it. So you have uh, acknowledged that there are yes, there are yes, issues we, with, we, uh, with yeah, water yes, quality. Yes, we have, uh, yes. No, yeah. we have, and we have. Uh, uh, it was two two weeks ago. We communicated to the residents what the challenges were. And we, we told them what then the action plan would be in addressing the, the water quality issue. And I'm saying the municipality has always been honest about the challenges. And we are working very closely with Mahalis to ensure that we resolve all of those imminent challenges that are coming through along the way in our quest to ensure that there's consistent water access to residents. All right, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we do appreciate it and we do appreciate your contribution and your input to this discussion. Uh, we do appreciate it. But thank you so much for that and we're going to have to leave it there for this uh, at this stage. Uh, we do hope that the situation improves. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And that's where we're going to have to leave it for this evening. A really important discussion uh, which has been brought to our attention, the situation in Zanyaville, in Rastenburg, uh, with regards to water. Water supply in that area seems to be uh, under severe pressure. And um, it seems as though this is uh, due to the, the lack of uh, supply. Uh, we've, uh, you've just heard uh, the, the spokesperson for Rastenburg Municipality, uh, you know, speak to us about this and uh, he's, uh, he's highlighted some of the issues uh, which the municipality faces uh, and we've also heard from a local businessman, a local uh, resident as well, uh, Shaeba Abam speaking to us. Uh, he's also a member of the Rates Payers Forum so he's also been speaking to us about uh, the situation, you know, highlighting the challenges and how this has in impacted uh, locals. Uh, it's a severe issue and uh, we do hope that uh, it does uh, get attended to. We do hope that the municipality does follow through with its commitment uh, to provide clear and clean water to uh, the residents. And water is a basic human right, you know. Uh, but that's where we're going to have to leave it for this evening. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, remember that this conversation does continue off air as well. You can uh, certainly engage with us on our social media platforms uh, at Salah Media. And uh, you can also interact with us on Facebook as well. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for tuning tuning in and uh, to the guests as well. Thank you so much for participating in uh, this discussion. Uh, we'll do it again next week, same time, same place. Please do stay tuned.